Peace everybody, welcome to Capital Combat. The name says it all. I'm Hakeem Branch and today I'm going to recap this past Saturday's light heavyweight title fight between Saul Canelo Alvarez and Sergey the Crusher Kovalev. Now, if you haven't seen them yet, we have a preview video that we released that was very extensive in how we broke down the fight. We then had a follow-up video in which Rob, my brother, went through our feelings after seeing the weigh-in and how terrible Kovalev looked. We had some new questions. And in the comment section, I actually changed my pick to uh, a stoppage by Canelo because I saw that it took Kovalev three times to make weight, and I didn't think that boded well for him. Then immediately after the fight, Rob did his initial reaction right off the excitement of the fight and show how he felt of the action. So now I've had a chance to watch it a couple times and we're going to talk about the tempo and feel of the fight, how the fight went versus how we thought it was going to go in the preview and then talk about what's going to happen in the future. So you're going to get a lot of good information in this video. Hit the subscribe button, hit the bell icon so you can be notified when Rob and I drop videos because you're getting quality boxing substance here, not emotions and, and feelings and people rah rah for certain promoters or fighters. We're going to give it to you exactly how it is and what we saw in the ring with no type of filter towards that. So let's get into it. In this fight, we had Canelo trying to make history, going up two weight divisions to challenge Kovalev, who was last seen just a few months ago stopping a big, strong, young, hungry lion in Anthony Yard by 11th round knockout. So, the prevailing thoughts going into this, that Kovalev was right for the picking, and that Canelo was going to stop him because of his faulty gas tank, and his uh, bad reaction to body shots. So let's talk about how we got to the finish because by now we all know how it ended. What happened in the ring to lead to that vicious knockout that honestly nobody saw coming. Uh, we thought that he was going to be stopped probably similar to what Andre Ward and Elida Alvarez did where he drops him with some body shots. He gets up. He is unable to continue. And the ref waves it off. But instead, we got Canelo knocking him slam out, which, I mean, like I said, didn't see that coming. How do we get there? So, we're going to talk about game plans. And this is where we're going to talk about the information that we dropped in the preview video versus what happened in the ring. So in the preview video, I talked about how Canelo is not the most fleet of foot, but his footwork is sure enough to where he will get in range without you noticing. And that's exactly what we saw. We saw him just walking Kovalev down with absolutely no respect for the power that this 175 pound man has possessed and has knocked out bigger guys, Canelo cared nothing about that. And he said he was going to walk forward with a high guard and walk this man down no matter what he did. So Kovalev, as Rob laid out, was just going to touch him. Just going to throw those hands out, use that jab to blind Canelo, and then throw right hands around the guard to the body and sometimes with an uppercut. That's exactly what we saw. However, Canelo was able to utilize what I said by inching in, getting closer, and then dodging from side to side or parrying those punches out of the way and throwing combinations to the body. For the first two rounds, which I scored for Kovalev because Canelo was missing, he, wasn't, he didn't find the range quite yet, but there was a stark difference in the punches that Kovalev was landing versus the punches Canelo was landing. And we saw someone fighting to survive 
versus someone fighting to win. And that really is the key factor in this fight. Kovalev was fighting to survive rather than fighting to win. He was trying not to gas out. He was trying to save himself for the later rounds. Whereas Canelo had a singular train of thought to knock him slam out. So everything he threw had knockout intentions on it. From round one to round 11. Kovalev, on the other hand, was mixing in his shots, just touching Canelo, trying to score points. Like uh, Rob said during the uh, video when we saw the weigh-in, just trying to hit Canelo anywhere just to try to affect his gas tank. Unfortunately, this plan played right into Canelo's plan, which he uh, devised with his trainers, Eddie and Chepo Reynoso, who should get a lot of credit for this because they got Canelo in there healthily they got him in there strong and they got him in there able to implement the game plan so as these rounds go on you see Kovalev he's throwing a lot of punches there a lot of them are landing on Canelo's guard but he's getting through with a few but none of them have that crusher like effect that we've seen from fights Pre Andre Ward. Um, I know we don't want to talk about Ward too much because those fights were two and three years ago now. But that was the start of where we saw the decline of Sergey Kovalev. Maybe even the Isaac Chalimba fight. But nevertheless, he was still formidable enough to secure another belt, to come back and beat Elida Alvarez. And hold off a huge light heavyweight in yard who had a lot of power coming into that fight with only one fight going to the distance. So Kovalev was not completely out of the game, but he was still seen as a guy on the shorter end, on the tail end of his career, which he obviously is being 36 and having multiple fights. So as the rounds go on, I would say starting in round three, Canelo begins to get that range and he begins to unload heavy shots on Kovalev, heavy counter shots. We already know that Canelo is an excellent counter puncher and he counters in combinations. And this is what we start seeing from round three on, which is why you start to see myself, the commentators, and a lot of people at ringside starting to sh score those rounds for Canelo because the punches that he's landing have a lot more effect than the punches that Sergey Kovalev is landing. And you have to ask yourself, when these guys are landing punches, are the punches deterring the other guy from implementing their game plan and winning the fight? So it's not just did the glove land flush on that person's face. The second part of that is... Is it doing damage or preventing that person from implementing their game plan? And we saw more and more that the punches that Canelo was landing began to affect Sergey, whereas the punches that Sergey was landing were not affecting Canelo. Like I said, he had a singular one track mind that he was going to knock Sergey out. So as these rounds go on, he's using that footwork, he's getting closer. He's in range with a lot more. So Kovalev begins to panic a bit. So you see him lunging in and attempting to grab Canelo and also holding the glove out there. Something that Rob said he was going to do to try to blind him, even though that is technically not part of the rule set, which he was warned for. But he's using these tactics in order to stave Canelo off, and they're not working. Canelo's just pushing him off when he grabs him. And then later on in the fight, starting about round 8 or 9, he just gets a little bit of separation and comes right over the top with a right hand. And on a man that's tiring because he's throwing 40, 50, 60 punches around, 
even though he's not putting a lot on him, that's a lot of energy to expend to throw and move like that. So, and then you've got a guy countering with very ill intent to the body almost exclusively. There was a combo in the fifth round where he rolls a right hand, goes right, left, right. I think it was the opposite. It was left, right, left. But he noticeably buckles Kovalev. And from there, it was basically the beginning of the end because he continues that for the remainder of the fight. But Sergey still put in a few rounds in the bank because there were a few times where he was able to keep Canelo from hitting him cleanly. So this was a very close fight going into the ultimate round where we see that overhand right from Canelo really starting to make a difference in the fight. And that was the punch that started the end of the sequence, which I haven't heard many people say. They they talk about that left hand and when he stumbled, but it was the right hand about five seconds before that when Sergey went in the clinch that started it. He walked off a little unsure. Canelo noticed it. Then he went for that left hook, which further stumbled uh, Kovalev. Then he got the meanest angle for a perfect right hand. And if you are standing to the side of someone and you can unload your right hand with all your might and it lands without imp impediment, you get what you got, which is Sergey Kovalev slumped on the ropes out. And like I said, I did not see that coming. Um, it was 2 o'clock in the morning. I honestly had to take a nap because it was a while. I didn't buy the UFC pay-per-view. So the people who were live had the privilege of watching it there and then watching the uh, boxing match, which I thought was great. But a lot of the boxing old heads are like, oh, I hated that. Whatever. Either way. So... That's another reason why I had to watch it a couple times because when I woke up, I watched it from like round seven on intently. Then I had to watch it all the way through. So that's neither here nor there. But the angles that both men cut during this fight have to be mentioned because both men were able to get very good punching angles off. And even though Canelo was walking him down, the way he rolled and slipped created new punching angles for him to land his counters. And the same thing with Sergey, where time to time he'd be able to step off to his left or his right and create a new angle and actually land a punch through Canelo's high guard. So credit and respect to both men. Afterwards, uh, Sergey kind of concerned me because he was talking about still unifying the division when I don't think he realized that he had lost. He was saying he wanted to unify and he could still be champ. But it was like, you just got knocked out five minutes ago. Like, you, you don't have your belt anymore. So it's going to be interesting to see what he does. I was thinking he was going to retire off of that. But I think his pride is too much to let him do that. So... Canelo, on the other hand, has a few options. He could stay at 75, maybe fight a contender. I really don't think he's going to try to fight one of the other holders, one of the other title holders, especially Peter Biev. Maybe not quite yet. But Canelo has shown some huge stones in the past where it's coming off of a schooling from Floyd Mayweather then fighting there is Landy Lara. Fighting Triple G twice. So we've seen him show some moxie. Also fighting Austin Trout when, you know, no one was really fighting Austin Trout. So he could eventually fight Bitter BF. He could fight Bival. There's a few up-and-coming guys that he could fight at 75. Maybe able to get uh, Gilberto Ramirez, who just moved up from 68. Or he could drop down to 68, where he has a title as well fight Callum Smith, um, 
what's my man name that uh, Rob mentioned? Uh, Benavidez. There's some guys that are out there that he can fight. I don't think he's going to go back down to 160. That may be a bad idea. But he could go back down there, fight Jamal Charlo, Demetrius Andre. Um, he could fight Billy Joe Saunders at 68. Daniel Jacobs is at 68 now. And if he looks good versus whoever he faces, you know, because Chavez Jr. fell out, that could be a good rematch. Canelo pretty much has an open road to go wherever he wants. So, what do you all think? Drop your thoughts down in the comment section below. Where do you think Canelo goes from here? What did you think of the fight? Etc. Etc. Follow us on social media, Capital of Combat, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. Hit us up, email capitalcombat at gmail.com if you got any questions. We get you in the combat mailbag. And we'll see you all in the next video. Until then, fight on. This is round one, and you've already lost. They don't seem to see that everything we've done is coming and gone. My fists are on fire. I perform till I perspire. My demons are in a rage. Keep thinking that it's the game. I kick crime, hurricane. I told them I don't play. I'm liquid. Black Street Fighter. Street Fighter. Street Fighter.